Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about XML, what it is, and why it matters to us in publishing. The XML acronym stands for Extensible Markup Language. A markup language is a way of inserting markup in the form of code inside angle brackets to the content of documents to add information about the content. You've probably heard of HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language, which is another markup language used to encode online content that is rendered in web browsers. HTML is actually a subset of XML, but the goals of each markup language are slightly different. While the purpose of HTML is to describe how content appears on the screen to users, XML is more generally used to indicate what the various pieces of content are. So while HTML tagging might show that a certain bit of text is supposed to be displayed in a larger font and centered on the screen, the XML element would more likely indicate that this particular piece of content is a title. Information about how to style the title is stored separately. Similarly, the markup of the first paragraph in the HTML text only tells us that the text should be aligned to the right of the screen whereas the same text in the XML document has been marked up with more granular, meaningful information about what those text elements are. One of the benefits of separating an element's meaning from how to display it is that the same XML document can be converted into multiple different presentations and formats. So we can take the same source XML file and transform it into different published products that people can read an HTML lesson in our learning ecosystem, a PDF that can be printed and bound as a print book, or an ebook that can be downloaded and read on your phone or e-reader. This model of publishing is sometimes referred to as COPE, create once, publish everywhere, and it drastically streamlines our ability to create new products and make changes in existing ones. If changes are made to the text content of the curriculum that we publish, we can update the source XML documents once and then compile new HTML, PDF, and ebook files automatically. It's not necessary for us to update the web, print, and ebook files each separately with all of the changes in the text. This single source publishing model also allows us to customize different formats to the specific audience who will be using them, displaying different pieces of content differently, or even not at all, depending on how they are intended to be used. As one example, we compile all practice questions at the end of a chapter in a print book, followed by all of the answers. But we separate out individual question and answer pairs to be linked to shorter lessons in the learning ecosystem online. One of the methods we use to create the XML documents that make up our curriculum content is by using a plugin to Microsoft Word called XStyles. In the training module that follows, you'll learn how to tag the information in Word documents using XStyles so that we can convert it to semantically meaningful, valid XML.